Hey guys, welcome to Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Samkoviak, and sorry I'm clearing my lens off here. Uh, we are at Camping World here in, in northern Michigan, Holton Lake, and I want to do a video here. We're going to talk about the differences between a travel trailer and a fifth wheel. This is important because they're two completely different worlds, and there are things that you may or may not notice about them that make a big difference, some things that set them apart. Price obviously being one of them, but not these days not quite such a huge difference, but a lot of big differences between them. So we're going to go into a few and we're going to talk about the differences to see what's going to be best for you. Fifth wheel or travel trailer. And I'm going to give a ton of tips and things to look for in both of these as we're going along through this. So I have a lot of experience with these things and we're going to make it so that you get what's best for you when you're buying these. So let's take a look here. So you can see we have fifth wheels all over here. Montana, which would honestly be probably my favorite brand of fifth wheel. One that's going to give you the most bang for your buck. Um, you know, Montanas are amazing and uh, they are upper end, but they are still affordable. The high countries, Montana high countries fit that bill also as being a little more affordable version, but they are top shelf fifth wheels. There are some fantastic ones as well too, like a Ch Alpha Wolf. These are incredible as well too. Now I get some people, because I had a, we just sold it, but we had a Cherokee alpha wolf uh travel trailer and some people are like oh that thing's a piece of junk should have bought better i'll tell you what our alpha wolf i'd buy it again 10 times over because they're priced right they work fantastic we never had one issue with ours that ever put it in the shop and it was one of the best campers we ever owned so for me i i love the cherokee versions the forest river cherokees uh they they hold a soft spot for me um here's another cherokee right here now some of the things i want to mention on here as we're getting into this here is you're going to first of all have to decide what your vehicle can tow all right so we're going to get into these dive deep but let's hit that one first when it comes to a travel trailer the weight of the unit is most important because you're towing it with a bumper okay like this so the weight of the unit is most important you're gonna to have to check your vin number on your vehicle search it online and see what the vin number of your vehicle shows that your tow weight capacity is okay that's going to be an important factor for you um and you're not so if your vehicle can tow 7,000 pounds you're going to want to stick with about a 4,500 pound trailer thing you got to remember is that the tow rating on your vehicle is designed for an actual load. Like uh, imagine, uh, you know, 7,000 pounds of bricks on a trailer is going to tow a lot easier than 7,000 pounds of this because of the sheer wind resistance of all these sidewalls on here and the width and size of this. So the wind makes them very difficult. So you want to keep your number, you want to stay in the, you know, you don't want to go above that 70% of your tow capacity of your vehicle, in my opinion. You do what you want, but that's my thought. Plus you're going to put 500 to 1,000 pounds of gear in these so you got to take that into consideration but if you're pulling a travel trailer with a bumper hitch like this which is how they're going to all be pulled realistically a $300 hitch to $1,000 for the hitch that just goes right in the hitch on your truck is all you're going to need and you're done okay sweet simple and easy right there and you're going to want to wait or keep in mind the weight of the actual vehicle okay that weight is going to be determined by the amount of slides that it has like this one there's no slides on this side I'm assuming there's a slide on this side right here. This is one big slide on here, so that's going to be a lot of extra weight. That's one thing you got to consider. Um, and then you have other ones. I just saw one. Did I see one? This one? Is it this one? One of these as I was walking up. Yeah, here you got two slides. You have two slides on this one. So that's something that you're going to need to take into consideration. This is all going to add weight to these vehicles, um, and you need to know that. So you got to be able to come in here, check your stickers, and see what the weight rating is on these things. So they're going to tell you what your cargo carrying capacity is on here i'm going to zoom in a little tighter here so you can see it whoop too much there you go it's going to tell you what your cargo carrying capacity is what your uh, water tanks are going to hold weight wise your whole details everything are going to be on these stickers here uh, it's going to tell you what they weigh the whole setup so you can see everything on there and make those determinations and then you're going to check what your truck is capable by doing a VIN number search for weight tow or tow weight capacity. But on a vehicle like this, on a fifth or on a uh, travel trailer, mainly the most important number is the actual weight of the vehicle dry. And then you're going to figure it out when you're going to figure five to 500 to a thousand pounds of added uh, gear in there. Now, when you're going to do a fifth wheel, on a fifth wheel, it's a whole different ball game that a lot of people don't understand. Look at the sheer size of that versus, you know, you look at one of these and then look at the sheer size of one of these. Now on this, 
weight is one thing, but it screws a lot of people up because they look at this and they go, okay, I can tow that. It's only 13,500 and I can tow uh, 17,000 pounds with my uh, F-250 or my uh, Ram 2500 or Chevy 2500. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. You got a bigger issue there. Okay, the weight of this thing is one number, but the most important number that's going to matter is right here. It is your pin weight. Okay, this is your pin for your hitch, but the weight of the front of this thing on your actual bed of your truck, which is called pin weight, that number goes out, it comes out of your payload capacity. So an average 2500 uh, series uh, diesel truck is going to have a, a payload capacity of about two, let's just call it somewhere between 1,700 and 2,200 pounds. Let's call it 2,000 pounds of payload capacity in that vehicle. That means that anybody, I think it's rated today, you have to check this, but I think payload capacity is after is full tanks of gas in there, full oil, and one 200-pound driver. And then everything besides that added in your vehicle, including other people, your gear, and the weight of this in the bed of your truck goes against that payload capacity. So if you figure you got, if it's a 2,000 pound capacity and you're going to have a couple people in the vehicle, let's say you're going to look for a 1,500 pound payload capacity is what you have to work with. If this hitch pin weight on here, which on this one, I'll bet is probably pushing 3,000 pounds, 20, 2,600 pounds, um, then you're going to be way over. This this particular one, I don't know what this is, but based on... Uh, um, I'm gonna, I would just ballpark and say that something this size is going to require a minimum of a 3500 or a 3500 dually um, from the fact of the hitch pin weight. You see a lot of people go down the road with these behind 250s and 2500s all day long um, for something this size, but... The hitch pin weight is the key factor that you have to pay attention to on this. Uh, again, even if this is 13 or four, say it's 14,000 pounds, you can tow 16 or 17,000, you think you're okay, but you can only handle 1,500 pounds of extra pin weight in your bed for payload, and this is coming in at 2,700 pounds. You're basically 1,200 pounds over on your, your hitch weight or your uh, pin weight and your payload capacity. You are illegal and in trouble. So you got to watch that stuff and pay very special, careful attention attention to that um, and the, the pin weight varies from model to model it's not the size of it that matters it's whether it, if it's a front kitchen and all the kitchen is up here this thing is going to be super heavy on the front if it's front living area it's going to be super heavy on the front um, if it's just a bedroom here it will be much lighter because most of the weight is in the back so these are things that you got to consider on a fifth wheel and then you also have to take into consideration that putting a hitch for this, okay, we're on that, that those uh, travel trailers, very simple, just hooks to any truck, but you can pull those with a 1500 series truck all day long for most of the models. This, you are going to have to have a hitch installed in the bed of your truck. If you don't already have the mounting points in from the factory in there, that's probably gonna cost you 500 to 1,000 bucks for that. Then you're looking at 500 to two or 3,000 bucks for the actual hitch. If you have a short bed truck, you're probably gonna want a uh, auto sliding hitch so you're not wrecking your truck banging your truck into the sides of these on turns so that that thing can pivot and slide as it needs to. You're looking at three grand in there, cute 2,500 bucks kind of thing. Um, so there's there can be, you know, depending on your setup, it could be $3,000, $4,000 right here for you to get it set up with this. Is it a bad thing? No, not at all. They're a fantastic thing. Like I said, if I was doing another camper, like we're going to, uh, our next one, we will go fifth wheel from the travel trailer. Now, I'm gonna tell you why, and we're gonna show you some of the differences that make these things great and what the variations are between them. Because again, huge different world between a travel trailer and a fifth wheel setup. So let's take a look at those. Now, as we're going through these, I'm gonna show you some other things that are common between the two of them as well too, but don't forget, I have a course out there, Save Thousands course. When you're ready to buy one of these, it will save you tremendous money. There's a link down below, right next to the title of this video. Click on the little arrow, it'll drop down the details, and right there, you'll see that Save Thousands course. It will show you how to save tremendous money on these things. But now, for example, on a actual travel trailer, which is what we are looking at right here, this is, again, doesn't matter which one. They're, they're, it, they're all very much the same so different floor plans but some of the things that matter on the outside um, with uh, travel trailers or fifth wheels you notice this is a perfect example because it has both styles two styles of steps okay 
that style of steps is a thousand times. The more rides or whoever step above, whatever, whoever makes them. But this style of step is incredibly stable, sturdy, and durable, and exactly what you want. And then this, these, these are the way every single camper should be. The days of these are long gone. Some still use them as a secondary door. But this style here, which comes out, folds out like this, is wobbly unstable um, and then these are left out and exposed to salt dirt grime water crap rusting getting beat up um, this style step is not very stable not is there's nothing to support it it just free hangs and this are uh, not in my opinion even remotely um, what I like in a step it's not my style at all where these are rock solid adjustable you pop that pin the legs slide out to different lengths but these are incredibly stable solid because they are on the ground and with these what they do is when you're done with them opening this door up they actually will fold right up inside of the actual unit and there is a clamp right down here that you pull and it sets in there like that you lock that now these stay inside the actual vehicle when you're in transportation mode so that there is no nothing out here getting covered with grime and stuff like that so they are inside protected and uh set up and then when you're ready you open a door pull the pin they come to you and you bring them right down and you have your perfect steps so that to me is the ultimate type of a system right there that's these steps are the ones that matter so that is one thing worth considering on all fifth wheel and um it doesn't matter travel trailer fifth wheel every vehicle needs a way to get into them these more rider step above steps are definitely the way to go now <clears throat> on a travel trailer one of the big downsides is lack of storage Okay, understand that. So outdoor storage, most of them will have a pass-through. Pass -through. Again, this is not, you know, specific to these. They're, they're all basically the same. They're going to have a, a storage unit in the front, which is a pass-through. Notice that this just free hangs, okay? Just hangs there. You can use this clamp. And don't let, yeah, this clamp can pop open like this. can put that up in there, and then that's designed to hold that. But this is your storage area. Okay, right here that panel would be closed so that you could see the other side I'll show you in a different one, but this is your whole storage area. Okay, this is what you have again with them having that uh, Panel open. I'll show you on a different one so you can see all the way through um, But that is your outside storage now this one I'm assuming this is like a little mini outdoor kitchen or an outdoor entertainment center They get all kinds of little things that fill nooks and crannies um, that is your little outdoor kitchen refrigerator pull out stove, you know, so you get these kind of things But that's not storage And then this I don't know what is too might be because of this design is this storage in this one? Yeah, now this one's got extra storage. That's amazing. That is nice. Okay I don't you don't see this very often on a on a uh, travel trailer. You don't see Rear storage very often on them like that and then there's usually nothing around the back either So let's look at another one here two of these to show you where we can see a pass-through But though that's your storage options one pass-through here that one had a little bit bonus one in the back That's the same exact model. So that has a little bonus in the back, too uh, Let's keep going here. Here is uh, let's just look at one of these pioneers for example in one of these here, you have, let's see that pass-through again. That This is usually always a pass-through in the front. So this comes up. See, there's your pass-through storage. And don't get me wrong, it's pretty good storage. That's not too bad a storage. You know, I mean, you get a good area in there. Works out pretty well. You can put stuff in there. I mean, it's good storage, but it is very limited compared to what you get in a fifth wheel, which we'll cover. This one does not have any more storage, I don't believe. No, and that's how most of them are. It's just a front pass-through in storage. That's your only area, but that pass-through is accessible um, from both sides. So this is that same exact pass-through pass -through area right here. Same thing we just saw on the other side. So that would be all of your outdoor storage on one of these. So now let's look at the outdoor storage setup on a fifth wheel for comparison. Way over there, we're passing this little Rockwood mini light. Let's take a look. I see a lot of compartments here. Let's see if these are storage here. Um, so let's just see what you get. Because like I said, some of them do vary. This one, very small little spot right here. Probably, uh, is that set up for propane? No, it's just uh, storage. A lot of times they'll put them for propane there. But uh, you got a little storage there. 
and you got a small pass through here that does go all the way through to the other side um so you got a small pass through right in there oh that little spider is coming with me there you go and then I see, but you see some more. I see a lot of little storage compartments. Another small storage compartment right here. So it's kind of neat. It's, you know, this does not have a huge pass-through, but it's giving you, and that's your little outdoor kitchen area here, or that stove is going to be mounted somewhere. Um, I don't think this is considered that, but it does have a little storage area here too, which is kind of nice. So for a very small unit, this is a very small unit, this little mini Rockwood, um, but it does have some really cool, um storage features on here this would be your outdoor kitchen on this one i'm assuming so you can see and this pops up yeah see there's your whole outdoor kitchen um so you do get a little bit of storage along with that outdoor kitchen but then uh you have your same things here too but you can see that it's different designs but realistically i'm saying it's about the same size as a big pass-through there's that little bitty pass-through again the other side of it much smaller than on the other ones but you're getting these little compartments here for everything as well too so you are gaining storage so they don't do bad in these travel trailers but now let's go look over here at one of these and see what you're getting storage wise over here so let's look at this montana i'm curious what one this is montana 33 or uh, 331 or 330 were the ones i'm interested in for ourselves that we want to get um so i know that one pretty good but let's just look at this one so looking at the side of this okay and this one's a, a pretty good unit here, but let's just see. Here, you have, see what this is? Is this storage or is this not storage? Could be outdoor kitchen. Oh, sorry, one-handed here. Let me pop that one, pop that one. All right, let me get my hand under there. There we go. So this is a little outdoor kitchen here. So again, we're not really calling that storage. So we'll rule that out. And what's nice is these are slam latches, okay? You, what's nice about this, you don't have to turn nothing or mess with it. These are magnets that are going to hold it up, but these are slam latches. So you just let it go and let it come down. But they are locking. But these are amazing. So let's see what this is. Look at the storage here. Now, see what I mean with this door? See how it stays up on its own? Magnetic up there? Those are nice. They're slam latches, and you can still add struts to them if you wanted to put a strut in here, strut assist. But look at the massive size of this pass-through i mean this is just huge plus you got your controls in here you also end up with power outlets and things like that but i mean we're talking three feet in here i mean this is absolutely massive storage right here now with a slam latch see i just grab this bring it down i just let it go that's it locks on its own it's done and now these are usually because fifth wheels don't have a trailer hitch to mount propane on like you see on that one right there can see on the front of that travel trailer you have propane tanks right there because there's a hitch to put them on fifth wheels do not have a hitch so usually your propane tanks are set right in here that's why these are just normal turn locks but see you got your 30 pound propane tank right there this is your hydraulic stabilizers we'll talk about that when we get to that section but you usually got a propane tank on this side and the other side it does give you some extra storage in here if you wanted to if you wanted to mount some things but technically these are not storage that's propane tank huge storage there you come into the front now you're going to share this with some batteries and stuff like that but here look at this massive amount of storage all your hydraulics all your stuff in here batteries will go but look at the massive storage that you have here in the front of this which makes a tremendous difference so here you have that now this one is access into the same area okay for your hydraulics your battery will go right there that's your vacuum system for your built-in vac you, the most fifth wheel a lot of fifth wheels come with a built-in vacuum system i'll show you but look at the size of this massive the whole front of this thing is all pure storage space which is just incredible to have all of that access there that massive space this is another uh, this is actually your uh, control for your levelers this is going to be the other propane tank at your leveler. This is a hydraulic leveling system. Um, again, I'll cover some of that here in a little bit for you. It's going to be a long video. And then this is the other side of your pass-through, again, with those slam latches. So on these, again, one-handed kind of makes it trickier. There we go. Let me lift that up. Get my hand fingers under there. And now this is hydraulic because the slide is here you can't flip this one all the way up so you see that you have the hydraulic here that holds that up and it lets it rise and go slow coming other hydraulic here here's your docking station with all your stuff 
um, which is nice. So all your gray, your black, everything, all your everything is right here. Which is really nice on a fifth wheel. Um, some of the travel trailers are starting to do that now too, but a lot of them have things spread out where you got to go to different valves again, stuff will cover. But look at that massive pass through storage. So you get a tremendous amount of storage on a fifth wheel versus a travel trailer. That is one thing that you definitely need to take into account is the massive amounts of outside storage. And one thing I love about Montana, they give you this. Okay, Montana does this. I don't know of any other ones, but this right here is a storage tube for your black water hose so that it does not have to be in there. If you watch my other videos, I built a metal box on the back of my travel trailer to hold all my black water stuff and sewer pipes so I did not have them inside the cab in case they were stinky or anything like that. They're just dirty. So Montana gives you a place right here to stuff that whole tube right into that crinkle tube and put it all and store it all right inside of here for you. That's a beautiful system that Montana it does um, but basically storage wise you can see how a fifth wheel if, if storage is important to you outdoor storage it is hard to beat a fifth wheel over a travel trailer again perfect example another travel trailer right here now this is actually a uh, toy hauler back end but with this travel trailer if for comparison like my travel trailer this is all I got for storage right there that's my whole storage compare that to what we just saw on this thing is unbelievable. I mean, there's so much outdoor storage on a fifth wheel. Thing to keep in mind when you're talking about um, setting up for uh, uh, fifth wheels, there's a few different variations of stabilizers, okay? Uh, or for travel trailers versus fifth wheels. So if we come back over here and look at any one of these travel trailers, doesn't matter which one, most of them are gonna use this kind of a leveler. Now they may be electronic scissor style, but a lot of them are like this. Okay, this is your le or your uh, your levelers okay, or your not levelers stabilizers. I'm sorry, stabilizer jack. So you're gonna you got a hand wrench that you can use, or you can put a nut on the end of your drill. Watch my other camping videos, my camper videos, you'll see. But then this runs down and that stabilizes. You got four corners of these, okay? But you have to come out and hit these before you do that. You have to level this vehicle. Okay, which means that when you pull into your campsite, you need to actually get out with a level or buy a um, electronic leveling system. But you need to take and bring your level like mine doesn't have mine had a ledge right here that we put it on. But you could put your level right across these bars and make sure it's level this way. This camper has to be leveled this way and it has to be leveled front to back like this it needs to be leveled so that it's perfect for your fridge to work right, for things to be comfortable, all that stuff. So you level the back to front with the hitch, so that's or with your tongue jack, so that's real easy. But the side to side leveling will often require you to put blocks underneath the wheels on one side, drive up on them, re-level it, check it. If it's not high enough, back off, put another lock on there, drive on. So when you're at camper, camp, campgrounds, you see these things set where one side's got a bunch of yellow or orange blocks or wood uh, two by tens underneath there. That's leveling that vehicle, okay? And then once it's level and it's set, you come around and you drop all four stabilizers down. Because of the height of these from here to there, you're probably gonna wanna have some yellow um, level stabilizing blocks or wood or something under there to help because if you run that all the way to the ground, these things still rock. Okay, they rock because they don't they're not supported quite as well so having that those blocks under there will bring this down and, and make that so that these aren't expanded so hard you get better leveling capability so you're going to want to have um you know probably two sets minimum of two sets of like camco leveling blocks i'll put links below for you but when you run those on all four corners so you got to also remember those leveling blocks you're going to have to store them so they are going to take up room in your storage area to have all that stuff but that's how you're going to level this okay on, on most travel trailers doesn't even and even if those are electronic um where you push a button and they come down it's the same concept each one is done manually like that but you have to take the vehicle get it level by driving it in putting it on a block whatever you got to do to level it and get it right once it's leveled you have to manually drop all four corners of stabilizers and you have to store those blocks those camco blocks that you're going to use for stabilizers and leveling somewhere in your storage compartment which is we already determined again you don't have a lot of storage 
um, on these when you start stacking stuff up. Lawn chairs, a uh, you know a rug, a grill, or anything you want to put in there. Uh, your water lines, your uh, power cord you see there, any adapters you need. Uh, you know this stuff starts filling up pretty quick with space on here. You know you jam them full pretty fast. So, but that and then you need a block for the front hitch. Okay, you're going to need a block to put on there most likely as well too under there to level that usually. Something that just makes it easier. Not mandatory in all places, but some of these uh, parks you get into, you might be, this might be a big, much bigger drop on the front and you're going to need a block under there. So you're going to have to store that stuff and you have to manually do everything involved. Now on a fifth wheel, whole different world. Doesn't matter if it is electronic or if it is actually uh, um, whether it's electronic or it's hydraulic. Now here is hydraulic. Here's both side by side. Show you. But now uh, this one right here, these round ones. This is hydraulic system right here. Okay. So you have hydraulics right here. You have two in the front, two in the middle, and two in the back right there that you see. So there's six hydraulics on this. So you don't have to store any blocks, you don't have to mess with anything, you don't have to do any of that stuff, you don't even have to level this. When you take this vehicle and you back it into the spot you want or pull into the spot you want, all you do is come over here to your level up. This has got a level up hydraulic system and you use this and you just hit the buttons and go and this thing drops down and levels everything out for you and lifts it all up and does all the work for you. Done in a matter of seconds. It's flawless. So uh, you don't have to mess with anything on a fifth wheel. You don't have to do everything manually. It's all done for you through the hydraulic complete self-leveling system. And because these are hydraulic and because of the way they're built, there is no movement in this thing when you're in you do if somebody gets up and walks around in here in the middle of the night you do not feel it somebody does it in one of these the whole thing rocks shakes and you know exactly what's going on so it's a big difference even if somebody shifts in bed you'll feel it in a, in a travel trailer in a fifth wheel you will not feel that one bit there's no rock there's no nothing now here is a electronic leveling system electronics you can tell because they're square that's ground control 3.0 hydraulic is round electronic is square He's got locking pins on there too, which is kind of a nice safety feature for you. But electronic usually uses four, like a travel trailer. Two in the front and two in the rear. Okay, that's these ones back here. Okay, they don't usually go all the way to the back. They don't need to. But you got two here, one there, and you have the, or two there, you know, two sets. Front, back, not six like the hydraulics. This one's got them, hydraulic has them front, middle, and then in the back behind the tire, you can see it there where electronic is usually back and front. But same thing, this one's probably locked so I can't show you, but in behind here is the same controls. So it works the same way as the hydraulic system. Self-leveling does all the work for you, very simple setup. So leveling wise, and it's the stability of them when they're, they're parked, uh, the storage factor, that may come into play for you whether you wanna go with a fifth wheel or a travel trailer. Those are things that you have to take into consideration and, uh, and keep in mind. One more thing about uh, fifth wheels that may or may not be a consideration for you, and some people it matters to, some it doesn't, but on both this Montana, Montana high country, the high country being the little or uh, the more elementary grade, Montana uh, proper as this is, is being like the high end, high, high end Montana. This being the more affordable version, both of them are phenomenal. But what you end up with here is, see this frame? See how far down this goes and how tall that section is? That's called a drop frame, all right? So when we look at this inside, you're gonna see this right here. Let's pop it and see. Okay, so when we look in here, uh, no, that's not going to show for you in here. You're not going to notice it. No, you're not. But anyway, this phrase, this height that you have here, we'll see if we can show it in the other one, but this height right here that we're seeing, see how deep that is for that. And now look at over here at this Cougar. This is non-drop frame. See how much smaller this area is here versus the areas on these. So what that does for you is that gives you tremendous more storage, okay? You end up with this whole front area being much, much bigger in here. Height-wise, you can see tremendous distance and height in here for that, all that extra storage because that frame 
drops down. It's a drop frame. It brings a frame right here that you're seeing down low where the other ones usually bring that frame straight out. Um, so this is a big feature. So a drop frame front um, is a is a good bonus feature to have on a fifth wheel. So again, looking at that, look at how much height you have there. When you look at the side hatch, you can see it here too. And then I'm going to take you over and compare you to that other one. It's non-drop frame. Again, look at the height of this, how deep this is, which is just absolutely awesome, the height that you have in there. Now, if we walk over and look at this Cougar, for example, and we look in the inside of this, you will see that difference in here. Okay, look at how much shallower, okay? Because you don't have the drop frame in there, so it's much shallower in height. Same with in the front, right here we have look at see how much less height that is comparatively i mean that other one i could have almost stood in you know i mean just saying it's just a whole different world in that height factor so that's something when you're looking at fifth wheels you might want to take into consideration straight frame drop frame drop frame tremendous i mean more i would say almost double the storage you know, probably at least 30% more storage height than what you get um, in a standard versus a drop frame. So that is definitely a consideration. Here you can see the drop frame. So here's the main frame, 12 inch I-beam frame that comes across. And then look at, see, so that frame comes across and goes there. Then they drop the frame down right here and run that to the front. That drop of frame versus being everything on top of that main frame beam that comes through there by dropping this front part down that's what gives you all that storage height and all that extra bonus room in there versus a straight frame going all the way through there and everything being on top of it um so drop frame is definitely a, a nice feature i'd note for you um i would never own a fifth wheel without a ladder on the back plain and simple two you got to get up there and clean your slides off even if you have toppers things to do um plus it gives you a place to be able to hook things to if you want to there's all kinds of racks for bikes things of that nature uh to put storage uh you know portable uh waste tanks all kinds of things you can put on there but having a ladder on the back to be able to get up and clean your slides off phenomenal um and also montana one of the very few companies it uses an actual 4,000 pound, is it 4,000 or what is this one? Uh, 3,000 on this one, maximum gross, 3,000 pound trailer. So you could pull a 3,000 pound trailer and you have a four way pin connector on this. Uh, most of the campers are only rated to carry uh, like a 150 pound rack or a bike rack, um, you know, something like that. But this one, Montana and Montana High Country both give you tow capable rated hitches on them, which is really nice. Here's a Montana High Country right here and this one here also same thing you got the four-way hit pit, pin hitch and this one is same thing three thousand pound so you get that and now another nice thing too is your spare tire is on a slide on a lot of these so you unhook that slide well we're under here you unhook that and you pull that out it's a ladder rack that you can pull out and you have your spare tire on there and you can see on that ladder rack there's places to put other things so if you wanted to mount a little box there or a little storage box there you can actually get them on there and then just pull that tray right out and have access to your spare tire that's a nice feature they do i i like that a lot um one of these days i'll do a, di a video difference between um a high country and a regular montana because there are some some differences in here but those like i said are guaranteed minimums for me is going to be the hitch care hitch on the back love that montana is rated and you have the ladder i would not buy a fifth wheel without a ladder on the back another big difference between travel trailers which we're looking at here and fifth wheels which we're looking at here is the height these things are monsters. Look at the height of these versus a travel trailer, okay? They're much, much taller. That equals a lot on the inside. So we're gonna cover that here in a second. We're gonna go in and look. This is a Keystone Passport, okay, Keystone. Montana's are made by Keystone, so these are technically same kind, same company kind of deal here. But when we go here and we look at this, so if we go inside of this one, just take a peek in here. I don't know what this layout is or anything, just in case you're curious what it was. It's a Passport 2950 Bunkhouse BH, and it is not letting us in because it's locked. Okay, so we're going to check a different one. See, maybe we can't get into any of these. Maybe they're all locked. I don't know. Let's see here. Uh, let's just check this mailer. See, but maybe maybe they all have them locked here. I'm not sure. Um, so let's see. See, that's locked too. Let's check over. We'll just keep working. Sooner or later, maybe we'll find one open. Uh... 
see if this I don't want to go into quite a mini one it's not quite a good comparison here let's check when he's pioneers and then we'll check that uh, Cherokee over there too let's see if we get lucky here there we go here's one open okay so when we go in is and again doesn't matter the floor plan uh, this one if you want to know what we're looking at this is a, a pioneer DS320 but so when we look at this inside nice camper nice unit okay but see the height wise in here now i mean I, keep in mind i'm only five six so it's not too bad but you know you can touch that ceiling all day long um when you go into the showers and bathrooms usually where you're going to feel it more but uh this is a rear bunk house model nice setup you got convertibles there these all full they flip right up okay you can pin them up high and get them out of the way if you want so um very nice setups in here okay again we're not going over a bunch of floor plans i'm not doing that in this video um but the very nice unit um nice setup but when you get into bathroom here which we'll do in a minute so your bedroom area but usually when you got to step up into the shower is where people for these travel trailers it gets to be a little tight okay here's your bathroom Nice setup, door coming out of the bathroom. But your shower here, when you're in a shower, you step up into here, a lot of guys, height-wise, now keep in mind, again, I'm only 5'6", but you can see where a six-foot guy, his head's going to be almost right on that, okay? You're going to be touching. So they start to get a little claustrophobic in the bathroom areas, and you kind of just get that feeling of smaller size because of the height not that they're a bad thing like i said travel trailers are amazing and there's a lot of advantages to them i like that little oh, smaller than i thought but nice little pantry there but anyway point being that they have that feel okay that height is kind of closes you in a little bit on here so let's go look into a fifth wheel and see what it looks like what that extra height does for you in an actual fifth wheel unit so we close this up I know that Cherokee was open, so I'll walk into that real quick too, just once more for you to see um, one more because that door was open. Um, but again, nothing wrong with travel trailers, not knocking them at all, just trying to make sure you get what's right for you. So if we come into this one, this is a rear bunkhouse here too. Uh, this model is right here, so you can see. There's what we're looking at. But now here... But same thing, you can see the height of this is not that big, okay? I mean, I can literally, like I said, I can touch, and I'm only 5'6", but I can touch everywhere in here. So you're 6 foot, you know, it's, it's not a lot of wiggle room here when you get into the slide areas here. So like when you get up off the couch, look it, I'm 5'6", I'm okay? Keep that in mind, I am 5'6". If I'm sitting on the couch, I go to stand up, I am 5'6". So... Keep that in mind when you're, you're considering these. It's something that you want to weigh in. Also notice in 99% of the travel trailers, very minimal bedroom space, very minimal indoor storage. Okay, your closets are going to be like something right there. A little bit of overhead storage. I mean, this is classic, okay? There are some variations, but typically this is your travel trailer setup. A little walkway you can wiggle through here to make the bed. But same kind of thing on this side. You're simple. You know, I mean, these things are designed for weekends. You know, that kind of stuff. But they are very simple in design. This is beautiful here. I have never seen this in a bedroom one that I've looked at. But a nice closet in here. That is a nice feature. I've not yet seen that. That was pretty cool. Um, I thought that was a doorway to get out of here. Most of them have two doors in and out of the bedroom. But that's, that's a nice feature. But again, you can see... You know, the height wise in there. Bathroom wise, this is pantry, I'll bet. Nice pantry. Love pantries. I would never buy a unit without a pantry. Um, they're just, they're, they're very valuable. And then this would be your bathroom. This is actually a really nice little, this is a really nice camper. Uh, oh, and I love the window in the bathroom too. That's also, this is, this is really nice. Nice setup in here. So just stuff to take into, love the, the hooks right there too, but uh, fantastic setup. Now this, plastic toilet. Okay, plastic. That's an actual plastic toilet. A lot of them have porcelain. I like the porcelain. It's a lot easier to clean. It's like the sinks are plastic in here. Um, you know, there's a lot of variations you got to take into consideration. But um, when we go into a fifth wheel, you're going to see some differences. But same with even sitting here. 
as I sit here at this table, I'm fine. It's all good. But if I stand up too quick right here, like I said, I'm only 5'6". Just keep that in mind height-wise. That can become considerations in a in a travel trailer. Um, all right, so now we know that, let's take a look at a fifth wheel for comparison for you. thing I want to mention in here, notice the width across here, okay? Because this has got one huge, massive slide here that pulls that whole side out another, you know, four feet, okay? That whole side is completely moved out. So that is one slide. Now this side is all camper wall all the way down. So it can't, this is the widest part of this is right here, um, which is basically, you know, to kind of give you an example here, um, I, I don't know the math, but you can see by looking at me how wide uh, this whole setup is across here. Um, you know, I, I don't know how better to put that, but you'll see that now this is a single big slide on one side, double or what we call posing slides, huge difference in your uh, living space, huge, huge difference, which I'll show you. But this is a big slide on one side that is moved out, which is fantastic. I mean, if you're running a single slide, this is the way to do it. If you got two pocket slides on one side, I'll show you if I can get into one. You got like a section in the middle you can't get around. It's gonna be out here, okay? It's gonna be, it, it'll be right here, and then the rest of it, you'll have a wall here. But I love this whole one big single slide. This is how ours was. I love this setup. Think it's a fantastic way to go. But if you can do opposing slides, one slide on this side, one slide opposite of it that pushes out that way and pushes this out, you'll see how huge this space becomes in here, which I'll show you. It may, oh, hang on. Another thing that may or may not matter to you is tinted windows or non-tinted windows. These windows are not tinted on this model, and that means that at night everybody can see in there, and during the day they can see in there as well too. When you look at something like this Montana, and a lot of them, all the windows are tinted, so you cannot see in through them. Here they use tinted on the doors, but all the other windows are non-tinted, so people can see in there. I like the tinted window option, uh, because then during daytime and then even at night, you don't have to close them up in a campground. Uh, when you start camping for real and you start getting to these campsites, you're going to realize somebody's, I mean, your camper might be parked as close to the next guy almost as much as these are parked together um, so having it where your windows are tinted is definitely a bonus feature so um, some people like them open and I get that non tinted I much prefer the tinted window option first the non tinted window option if given a choice so let's go into a Montana fifth wheel here just because that's right here if it's open but let's see the difference notice that they are higher off the ground so you are four steps okay travel trailers you are usually only three steps so if you look at that one it's over there that we just looked at those are three steps that one we went into so these are four steps for fifth wheels because they're higher up so you're talking about four steps to get in still a more ride system on here or uh this being a uh, step above same kind of thing uh but they are just a that's an awesome step system see if this is open it is so we come in so as we come into here Let's look at the height difference in here. Okay, I mean, this is tremendous. Let's, I mean, look at me. Again, there's no way I can get anywhere near that ceiling in here. So it really opens that height up in there tremendously. So that's a, a big factor. Look at, I can barely, I mean, I, that ceiling in that other one is right here. Here, we got all this cabinet space up above that that I, I can't even reach in there. I need a ladder to get into those cabinets, but it gives you that storage option up in there. So that's a fantastic feature of the fifth wheels is the extra height that you have up in them. Nice, nice bonus. Now, also look at the, uh, as I come into here for a sec, opposing slides. See how you got a big slide here pushed out that way. This whole entire kitchen and entertainment section or center is on another slide right here that is pushed out that way. So... Whereas the other one was much smaller in size because all of this stuff had to be brought in. Look at the width across this one now. I mean, this is amazing amount of space in here. If you're looking at this, I mean, you know, I mean, it's just tremendous. If you go from the window here where that is, especially when we get into a living one that's set up like this, but from here to there... I mean, it's just there's so much room in it because you have this slide opposing this slide. And I will show you again in another one, um, but that's a huge feature. Your space in here across is so much bigger 
because of the opposing slides and it, you just feel a lot less claustrophobic because you have the extra height in here which is a nice feature this one also has a um, centered this is a desk setup or an office setup in here with little sliding doors um i'll, I'll show you the model number when we come out um but they, they just do everything really nice all your control panels now this one has a upper bunk we'll show you in a minute too but so fifth wheels usually have a way upstairs to get up above that area so here you can see as we again just to show you kind of a quick spin around here your kitchen your whole setup um big massive island it gets storage in the island and these things and there's there's travel trailers with islands too so don't get me wrong there but uh but just fantastic setup and then but most fifth wheels are going to have a step system to get up here so you may or may not like that bathrooms are usually here like that just like that now in the bathroom you have more heights in here Again, I'm 5'6", but you can see how much taller the room is inside of here versus those other ones. So it does show you get a lot more room and height in them. And the bedrooms are usually a lot bigger in a fifth wheel, okay, um, just by design. They, I, they understand it. Fifth wheels are usually more long-term use. So you have this tremendous bath bedroom. And you have washer and dryer hookups and capability, or you can use this as your storage as well. And then you also have uh, full walk-in closets, hanging racks, motion sensor lights is not hooked up, but they're motion sensor. But all this storage, this is a hamper, put a hamper right in there. Um, but you have all of this storage in here in this huge closet space. So they give you a tremendous amount of storage set up in here. They usually come with the TVs, a dresser. You can see there's a lot more in, this, in these bedrooms of a fifth wheel, including phone outlets in the slide. You don't see that on a lot of them. See how this is a slide? This bed would be pulled in on a lot of them, but it gives you that th uh, two and a half or three foot kick out to give you all of this walking room in here walking room around and you got outlets and that stuff right next to each side as a pull and you also get opposing uh breeze windows right there too so nice features a lot of nice features in a fifth wheel a um, lot of advantages now this one also has see this right here this ladder system that comes out slides out and sets like that right here that takes you up to this upper bunk okay so this one has an upstairs bunk house here too which is probably about the size of a queen bed uh, and it's kind of tight, but it, you know, I mean, you can see here it's, um, you know, I'm going to say that's probably two feet tall, but it is a nice crawl right up into and bunk space with a window up there. Uh, so it's a nice little feature, a couple cubbies up there. Um, but you get a lot of nice options in here and then you got your pullouts and everything. Like I said, we're not all, we're not doing this on different models or floor plans, but you can see that a fifth wheel, the height, the differences, the tremendous amount of space in them is very big. And opposing slides is huge. Some travel trailers also have opposing slides, but not all of this. It's a harder thing to find. But if you can get opposing slides, it opens up that living space tremendously. We'll see some more examples here. But as far as this model, if you wanted to see for your own, this is what this is that we're in right now. All right, let's go check another one. All right, here's another example. Opposing slides. Look at how massive this slide is. This whole thing is, again, on that slide, pushed out that way. Uh, it's only about a foot and a half slide, but it's pushed out that way. And you have your dinette and your other couch pushed out that way. It just gives you tremendous distance across here. Um, you know, it's another Montana, but beautiful layout in this thing. And uh, tremendous space. As you can see, just a lot of room across here. There's nothing claustrophobic about this one. Um, I don't know what these are. I'm assuming, what is this, bathroom or what? Uh, that is actually washer and dryer hookup and a spare closet. That's kind of cool. Like I said, there's so many of these models, you can't know them all. This is all your storage right here, your control panels, everything there. Here again, you're going upstairs. It is a fifth wheel. Fifth wheels usually have steps involved. It's nice to give you a handrail. Bathroom's got twin sinks. Like I said, nice setup. But again, you get that height in the shower too. Nice advantage. And the bedroom, look at how big this is. You know, look at the size of these bedrooms. Same, that same big closet. Huge um, dresser set up here too. So they give you a lot of nice features. Um, but this one I wanted to pop in and show you. Look at the width across that thing and how that opens up with those opposing slides. I want to see if I can find one that's going to show you two deep slides on each side. So that might be a front or rear kitchen, but it's because the kitchen slides, because of all of the weight on these, they're usually not that deep. 
um, so they can't they got a lot of weight they can't hang out that far but still you can see how tremendously open it is with the opposing slides if this same setup only had this slide all of this stuff would come into about where the edge of the counter is here and you would only have from the edge of the counter there to this would be all the space you get so it gives you all of that extra space through here because of those opposing slides Here's a Montana that shows you a little bit of that kind of cool, a, a little different arrangement here, which to me feels a little less open in the kitchen area. But again, you have that opposing kitchen slide to the dinette. Okay, see how that opens this area up. But where we really see it is, let's go up here to this. This is a rear living model, rear living room model. So you have steps in the back that come up and then you have this living room area. You got uh, theater seating here. Full pull-out couches on both sides. Your TV is a pop-up TV that comes up out of there. But look at this space. Let me come back a little bit. Because of that opposing slide and that slide, look at how wide this area gets. It's tremendous because you got two opposing slides. So that's a big feature having the opposing slides in here. Sorry, it's kind of dark in here, but none of them have power. Um, but those opposing slides make a tremendous difference in the width of these actual models so you can see but this is a rear living area so you have this whole separated living area separated kitchen area right here steps down come into the kitchen pantry there you got your massive fridges and these things like i said just incredible setup um on all of these i love the montanas this is going to be pantry right there again i'm not doing this video to show a ton of models um steps up your bathroom and then your bedroom being in here as well too. But again, same kind of thing, same big massive bedroom setup. But it shows you a little different variation on here. Um, but you can see the difference. See, when you have the, even in that last one, remember how we had the dinette and the couch and everything on one big slide? Look at the depth here versus when you hit this wall. Because if there was no slides, that's the width of this unit. Okay, right there. So it opens all that extra space up. And see how it opens up all that extra space too. That depth is the same as this depth, but because it's two separate slides, you still got to get around this. So I like the more open design concepts where all of that is on one, so it pushes this part out too to get rid of this nook right here. I want all that open. This starts to feel a little claustrophobic for me, even though you got opposing slides up there, which really does make the living room feel bigger because of that. But right here, and these are opposing here too, um, but since this little dinette is all that's on a slide, it feels kind of claustrophobic right here to me. I wish all of that would have went out with it too. Another thought on travel trailers, because most of your fifth wheels, like you're seeing there, are going to be opposing slides like you're seeing here, how you got them on both sides. Okay, that's a big deal. It's a good thing. That's what you want. Now, on your travel trailers, usually they're one slide. Most of the time you can get them with two. But if you have the choice... See how this side here, which would be your passenger side of the rig, if you were driving down the road, the passenger side of the rig is open and no slides on this side. This is important because I see this go both ways. 99% of the campgrounds you are going to be at, your world is on the passenger side of your rig. Okay, this is where your picnic table is going to be. This is your area. You're going to park your rig as far as you can to driver's side on your little campsite. And the passenger side is your whole world. That's why they put usually the awnings are on the passenger side. And that's where you want this stuff. Now, there are some makers out there that make them where the slides are this way and are set for, you know, the slides come out on this side. You don't want that because then that slide pops out on into your space. Now, on an opposing rig... Like the fifth wheels, there's no choice, but you get all that space anyway, so it's it's fine. But if you're only going to have a slide or a couple little slides on one side, make sure the slides are on the driver's side so that you're clear on your passenger side, which is your campsite side. So on here is where you're going to come in and out. Your awning is going to be out. Your table and chairs are going to be set up. Your picnic table. That's why they put your outdoor kitchen um, or whatever they got on, uh, you know, like this I'm assuming is outdoor kitchen. Yep, little outdoor kitchen, it slides out. All this stuff is going to be here. Your TV brackets to hang and your outside entertainment center. It's all going to be on the passenger side. So try to keep your slides on the driver's side. And notice you will also want the majority of your windows, the ones that matter the most, the ones that you're going to leave open are on your passenger side because this is your world at a campsite. This side over here, on this side, 
is your slide side, your water hookups, your sewer hookups, all your stuff. You're not doing anything on this side. You don't really need many windows. It's nice to give you some. The more windows, the better on a camper, in my opinion. But, you know, you don't need them as much here. Your world is on the passenger side of that camper. Always remember that. Passenger side is where your whole world is. This side is all your hookups, BS. And you're going to put this side as tight as you can on your campsite so that you get to enjoy as much as you possibly can on your passenger side of your rig over here is where all your stuff is going to be so that's a very important one to keep in mind and consider i actually want to look at this this is a brand new 2021 27 rk this is what i have um but mine was a 2019 we did not have this smoke glass door i did not have the outdoor kitchen but i want to take a peek in here real quick because this is what ours is well, Tina would be very happy with the new setup or the new lighter wood. But see, in most travel trailers, too, you have to buy your TVs, all that stuff. Where in fifth wheels, they usually come with it. Um, but this is my camper we have. But again, see what I mean? Typical camper or travel trailer setup with your closet, tight, tight space here to get through. Doable, but a little trickier. Um, and, uh, and again, much smaller in height. Much more closed in. This is a rear kitchen. Like I said, this exact one we had. We love this. We just sold it a few months ago, but we loved this camper. And uh, but nice space. But you can see again pantry. Um, but you oh, and they got a broken doorknob on it. But uh, you can see how this big slide really opens up this space here. Otherwise, it would be right where this edge is. This is how wide your camper would be without a slide by putting this huge slide in it opens up all this extra space and when you have an opposing slide like in a fifth wheel going out this way it gets much bigger even yet so but i mean this camper was fantastic we loved it and tina would love the new colors of the woods and these but uh but this is the, the one that we had it was absolutely phenomenal but just gives you an example here this one's a uh 27 rkl forest river like I said, this is the one that we had, treated us incredibly well. We loved everything about it, and uh, it's very, very affordable. It was just such a great unit. Last thing I'm going to show you here. Now, this is a very good quality, this is a high-end travel trailer. So this kind of combines what you're getting from fifth wheels and a travel trailer into one. So it is still bumper towable. It is a travel trailer. Notice the big slide on here. I love a lot of things about this one. Double awnings. So you got an awning off the slide and an awning there because this is your campsite side. Um, but you get that. So you have the awnings. You have your tinted glass windows, um, which is really nice. Window and a door. I like that. Uh, but this is your travel. But now look on this side. Oh, what do we got there? Two more slides. What? We got a travel trailer with slides on both sides. Yes, we do. This thing is amazing. Let's uh, take a look at the numbers here for you just so you can kind of keep in mind because you may or may not be able to pull this. You have to take that stuff into consideration. Unloaded vehicle weight is 8,380 pounds. Okay, that's important to keep that in mind. So you better make sure that you got a, uh, you know, you're going to want to be a, a 12,000 pound tow capacity to pull this. They call it a Cougar half ton, and uh, but I don't know if I'd be pulling this with a half ton myself personally. Just keep that in mind. Um, you know, it's, like I said, this is a lot of unit here. This is a lot of rig. Um, they may call it half ton because all they care about when they give you the prices or the numbers is that they match the number weight. They don't care if you're putting nothing in it or if you're loading it with a thousand pounds. They don't care if you're towing it across flat ground or if you're towing it through the mountains. That's none of their problems. That's all your business. But they may call it half ton towable, but an 8,500 pound rig um, i recommend you being a 2500 pound personally that's my opinion i would not tow this without a 2500 pound uh, or a 2500 series truck again my opinion you do whatever you want to it's your rig but for me knowing what i know i would pull this with my 2500 ram diesel all day long without worry whatsoever i would not pull this with an f-150 that's uh you know uh rated for 10,500 pounds there's no way i would ever do that um but again my opinion you do what you want to do but let's look at this a massive camper here and how beautiful this is this is cougar keystone now, you notice we had slides on the other side and this side, so we're going to have opposing slides. Also notice, I'm curious what this is, we talked about how most travel trailers have little storage in the front as a pass-through. What do we have here? I don't know. Again, I have never looked at this one, so let's see. Outdoor kitchen, right there. This stuff's all on pull-outs. That's magnetic, so that stays, but these are all locking pull-outs. That's your stove. You know, so you do have all these really nice features in here. Um, that you have in this so it's a nice little outdoor kitchen cook area no slam latches usually not on travel trailers you got to twist lock each one of them um you know whereas the uh 
the fifth wheels usually have the nice slam latches. Showers there. This one does nice thing. It does have a ladder on the back and a hitch carrier right there too. I do not believe that is tow rated. Maybe. It looks like a hitch bar. Uh, it would say... And does not, and I do not see a hitch pin for plug-in, so I'm assuming you're going to basically just use that for uh, uh, carrying a uh, basket or a bike rack, but at least they have the ladder. Nice feature. Um, so this is a really nice rig. Let's take a look inside. And you have ground control 3.0 electronic leveling on it, so that is very, very nice. You got uh, that electronic leveling system on there, which is golden, just like we had on the fifth wheel. So like I said, this gives you a lot of benefit. Uh, where's the no here's the number for it if you are interested in this kind of a model You still have your step above or uh, you know more ride whatever one you're using they're using step system Let's take a look inside of this. I've never been in here Start at the bedroom Still your classic bedroom kind of style. It is nice. You do get some room in there. This is a bigger bed You got storage above it. I love the window and you got your small little closets, just typical. This is how it is in a travel trailer, because again, they don't expect you to be in them as much as you are a fifth wheel. Love the uh, fan setup above here as well, too. That's nice. Um, beautiful little setup. I'm really digging it. I, I, I really, really like this setup in here. Um, bathroom, this is probably right into your bathroom. Most of them do, yep. Um, I love the clear doors. And you get some height in this one, too. This round ceiling... The ceiling you can see rounds but in a travel trailer look at that height that's pretty impressive pretty good is this porcelain i'm assuming porcelain toilet very nice i had that in mind too i love it our first one we had was plastic i did not like it the porcelain toilets are amazing so very nice setup in here very very good and we pop back out let's go around and so you can close your bedroom door here's the other way into the bathroom most of them are like that. Little slider two-way in. Um, look at the inside of this. Okay. That's pretty nice. Now, I'm assuming that's a bunk or something. We're going to figure that out. But uh, that's why it's there. But look at how beautiful this is. Again, opposing slides. Look at how far out that is from here. This is a beautiful setup. Okay. Very, very nice setup. Now, also notice that this vehicle is going that way down the road. The front is there. Okay, so let's look at that from an internal perspective because this is important here that we talk about this. So if we're standing in here right here, this is our camper. This is the front. This side is where all of our hookups, sewer lines, water lines, and where we're hugged up to the edge of our, our, our site, right? We don't need to see anything out here too much. Not important. That side doesn't matter to us. This side does. This is where the kids are playing, the picnic tables are, your little uh, fire pit set up. Everything is here. It's on this side. And look at how well you can see everything on this side of the rig. That is what you want. Okay, that's important. Love, I actually straight up love this travel trailer. This is just beautiful. Um, nice setup. TV right there. This is a little plane. I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but my wife would decorate that and figure that out. But um, I'm not quite sure. That's just because that's where the shower and bathroom is. But this is a cute, very cute little setup. Man, I think it's absolutely adorable. Straight up adorable. I love the white. Look at all the counter space and the paneling you get in here. I mean, I am impressed with this camper, when she sees this video, Tina's going to want to come down here and look at this because we are in the market for our next one. We're probably going Montana fifth wheel. But this travel trailer, very impressive. All the storage and stuff in here too. I'm sorry I'm looking along with you here. Like I said, never been in this. Very, very nice. The reason I wanted to show this was to show in a travel trailer opposing slides. Massive. Now, what is this? What is behind door number two? Oh my God, it's a bunkhouse. Look at that. Look at this. Okay, whole new room in here. Four more bunk options. Uh, absolutely amazing. Bunk here, bunk there, tons of storage. Storage there, bunk here. This bunk should flip. It does. Hydraulically flips up out of the way. Full couches, which pull out to a bed. Um, this is an incredible camper. This is an This is probably by far my favorite travel trailer for families that I've ever seen. TV setup go here. Uh, gaming systems and stuff go right here for the kids. Nice exhaust or fan in here too for them to get airflow. Opening cross opening windows. Um, you know, another opening window here. Just absolutely awesome bunkhouse room right here. And it's, uh, yeah, this is amazing. And I love that the bunkhouse is here. Master bedroom is at that end, separating everybody. This is just a fantastic 
travel trailer that's beautiful, but you see opposing slides. The point of me showing you this one is to see that you don't have to go fifth wheel to get a lot of the amenities you're looking for. Hence, island kitchen, beautiful setup, opposing slides, lots of room, good height in here. Now you saw in the other one, I was touching that ceiling like right here with this arched ceiling. That's a lot of height in here. Again, I'm five, six, I'm a short guy, but it's plenty of room in here. So it gives you a lot of features. It's a beautiful setup. So that's going to conclude this video. Hopefully it shows you the differences between fifth wheel versus travel trailer, lets you make some decisions. I wanted this to be in depth as possible and as detailed to really help dial it in for you. So thanks for watching. Again, there'll be some links below for all kinds of stuff for you if you're interested and check out that save thousands course. I promise you it will save you tremendous amounts of money. I mean, tremendous amounts of money. That 27 RK that we were just in that one that I own, that thing was MSRP of $40,000, okay, when I bought it in 2019. I paid $20,800 out the door brand new for it. People cannot do that stuff. My diesel truck that we have that we were just talking about pulling this with, I paid, that's a $68,000 truck. I paid $51,500 for that truck. Most people cannot do this stuff. I teach you in that Save Thousands course how to do that and how to do it for real and make it happen. So check that out too. It's down below and it'll probably be a little thing going across the screen for you. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.